If you're taking your notes in good old fashioned OneNote or even pen and paper, then how about we consider a different way? Because if you want to take notes using Microsoft 365, I believe that you can now use Microsoft Loop for a great capability to do exactly that. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started and create a new notebook and also structure it to make more sense to you, share content with others both internally and externally, and also get the most from it by checking out some of the task management capabilities as well. Now, of course, if this video helps you hit that like button, but also hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this that will help you use the tools you already have on your computer in much better ways. So other than that, let's dive into Loop and improve the way that you take notes. So all we need to do is access Microsoft Loop. Head to loop.microsoft.com or loop.cloud.microsoft and you'll be able to access Loop. You can even do this on the Loop app on your computer. When you're here, all we need to do is create a workspace to hold all of our notes for a particular purpose. So let's get started and create a workspace to put all of our notes in. Let's go to the right and click on the plus icon and I can give it new name and also an icon as well. With that done, we could add others here under the section that says share your space, but I wanna make it private only to me. Let's go ahead and select continue. And we'll now see it can also find files with this name that I could add easily into our workspace straight away. But let's start with a blank workspace. Let's go ahead and select create workspace here. And now we can begin to structure all of our content. And now we've got a place to store our notes. Let's look at organizing all of that content in better ways to make it feel more traditional in the way that we work with our notes. So we can now use sub pages, a new feature in Loop to better organize all of your Loop pages. You may remember in the past in Loop that when we created these pages, well, they all appeared on the left hand side. If I add a new page here, you'll see that all treated equally. There wasn't really a way to group them and create these hierarchies or groupings, or well, not anymore. Let's use this concept to create a section in our notepad. This is all around project scoping. So let's give the page here a name of project scoping, where it shows as currently untitled. As you can see, I've now added that in and also a cover image and an icon as well. I've also added a piece of text just to mention an area to store information regarding project scoping, but don't worry, it'll all soon become clear because now what we can now do is click on the freed up menu next to project scoping and we can now create a sub page. This again can act as a section in this particular area or a page in its own right. Once again, let's give it a title and also a bit of content so understand how we can use this page further. And there we have it. We now have a page dedicated to budget information. We could add content in here really easy, but of course let's consider what we've done on the left hand side. We've now created a project scoping section and we have budget information within there. We can also go further again, clicking the freed up menu, adding another sub page so they can also be stored under project scoping. And you can now see once again inside of our loop workspace or notebook, we've now got the content scoping information and budget information. We can even left click and drag to reorganize this content on the left. So we can use these sub pages to provide that ability to organize your pages in a way that fits your needs and create that logical grouping. So now we've got our basic structure. Let's go and see how we can add content inside of Loop. And adding content in Loop is really simple. Here on our budget information page, what we can do is you can easily paste content if you've copied it from somewhere else. But by clicking the forward slash key here, you'll see a range of different content you can add into your Loop page. Checklists, bullet lists, numbered lists, tables, and more. There's all types of content you can add into your loop page, much like you did in other note-taking apps. And there's probably even more options here, but I've created some content just using good old plain word. What I can now do is go ahead and I can paste this content straight into our loop page. As you can see, it's not really carried over any formatting. But once again, just like in other note-taking apps, what we can do is highlight the content and we can change whether it's a H1 header two or three, or click the freed up menu and see more options to also update the font size and more. Let's change this to a H2 heading. And beneath that, we can also do the same by making these a H3 headings. You can see how we can make this really easy inside of our loop page. You might equally be saying though, this content's great, but you want it in a table. Surely there's better ways than adding it just as a bunch of text. And it absolutely is. Let's go to the bottom of this page and again, click on the forward slash key. Now select table, and we can create a dynamic table to hold budget information as well. 
we can easily click into each column heading and add the different columns of data as we'll do now. Now I've created a basic loop table here with information on our budget as well as a label in this particular column. But the great news is loop tables go further than you imagine. You can also build rules that you couldn't see in other note taking apps. For example, maybe this gets overspent and someone updates it and I want to be notified. Well, that's very easy for us to do. Let's go to the free dot menu, select rules, and now we can choose a particular column. We'll select overspend and then also equals and we'll mark it as yes. But then when it becomes overspent, I need to do something. I could notify someone in loop. I could send a message on Teams or group chat, as well as even sending an email as well. That workflow will now be configured. It shows me what accounts will be used in the process. And now we can specify the email or who it goes to to notify. Let's go ahead and add in my account name here. And we'll note the subject is an overspend on Project Greenspace. And with that, just go ahead and select Create Flow, and that'll create the Power Automate workflow and email will be automatically sent. As soon as anyone changes the overspend to yes, that email notification will be sent straight out. So much like Loop, if you want to improve the way that you work, why not have a look at our website at Your365Coach? You'll find great new ways to work with us, as well as on-demand learning courses to take your skills to the next level whether you're using Loop, Teams, or even some of the new Copilot capabilities. You can find out more at the link below and even download a free Microsoft 365 ebook that can transform the way that you work in Microsoft 365. So other than that, let's dive back into Loop and continue to see how it can transform the way that you take notes. Not forgetting that we've probably got a lot of meeting notes that we need to bring in inside of Microsoft Loop. And just like other apps like OneNote, there's an easy way to do it. Inside of Project Green Space, I'm gonna go ahead and once again add a new page. This time, I'm gonna call it Meeting Notes as we can use this capability to store all of our meeting notes in. Once again, you can give it an icon and a cover. But let's go ahead here and click the free up menu and select new sub page. And I can now give this page a time and date of when a particular meeting was from. We have monthly meetings. I'm gonna go ahead and add the June meeting notes. But of course, we need to add our notes in. But as per other videos that we've shared on our channel, you can use meeting notes in loop capability inside of Teams just by clicking on the meeting. But we've also covered this in past videos on the channel. You can use loop meeting notes in your Teams meetings. You can also get them straight after the meeting. So let's head into Teams. And inside of Teams, I've accessed the meeting that I was in and I can now see all of my loop meeting notes. What you can easily do here is click on Copy Components, head straight back into Microsoft Loop. And here, all we need to do is paste in that link and our meeting notes are now synced inside of this page. Yes, if I go ahead and add a further comment here for an additional item that was agreed, what we'll also see is that we'll sync straight back into Microsoft Teams and also our meeting notes here. So a simple way to take your meeting notes that you've captured in Teams and bring them into Microsoft Loop and give them the sections and a particular area that you need. What about planning? You could either have a dedicated page or you could also create a section in one of your existing pages. Let's go ahead and check them both out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a new sub page into here to deal with scoping and planning. So this is all gonna to relate to the project scoping activities. Now in here, all we need to do is click the forward slash key and we can scroll down and we can find a task list here. Now this is all synced in Microsoft Planner. So let's go ahead and add a few tasks into this task list. One is allocated to me and another to my colleague, Megan. And the benefit is that as soon as I allocate tasks in this way, they are synced into Microsoft Planner and to-do. Yes, here in the Microsoft Teams Planner app, we'll also see the same task obtain budget approval, scoping and planning. So as you allocate tasks to people inside of Loop, they'll also appear on their task list inside of the Teams Planner app, ensuring they keep on top of all of their tasks. But what about additional planning capabilities? What if you have a Microsoft Planner that you'd like to insert? Well, all we then need to do is click forward slash again in one of your Loop pages. This time, type in the word Planner inside of your Loop page. Here, you can select the Microsoft app and now you'll get a list of all of the different plans that you have access to. Here's Project Greenspace Scoping. By selecting Insert, not only do we have the task list that I've individually allocated, but I also see all of the tasks inside a Microsoft Planner using the board view. Now to left-clicking tasks and so forth, 
make edits and updates and keep it all in sync. Everything I change here will be kept in sync in Microsoft Planner. So by doing this, you'll be able to keep all of your tasks in Microsoft Planner in sync and keep them visible inside of Loop. So you've seen two simple ways that you can manage tasks in Loop that we couldn't do in other note-taking apps. What about your files? Surely you need quick access to all of your important documents. Well, that's also possible. Here's an Excel file that we use with some financial data. I'd like to make sure that I can access it very quickly from Microsoft Loop in my own note area. Well, let's go ahead and click the share button and I'm gonna select copy link. Now here, you can make a decision on the right type of link. Here it's set with anyone with the link can edit. I'd rather not have that, so I'm gonna go ahead and select people with existing access only. So with our link now copied, let's go and click on the plus button and select new link. Here, paste in that sharing link into the address bar and now you'll see it even identifies an Excel file called financial data v2. By clicking add in here, we'll now see it appears inside of a link called financial data v2. We can left click and open it straight from our Microsoft Loop Notes. How cool is that? Let's go back into this area here and we can even left click and drag and move under the relevant area. For example, it's all relating to budget, so I'm gonna put it right here. That's a quick way to bring your files from SharePoint, OneDrive and Teams into your Loop Notes really easily. But as with all note-taking apps, you may wanna print one of your pages or even export it to PDF. Well, it's pretty easy to do. So it's really simple to go ahead and print or save this page to a PDF. Maybe this content here needs to be shared with someone else or just printed for a meeting. All we now need to do is click on the free dot menu, select print and PDF export, and you'll be able to do exactly that. Yes, Loop but previously was not able to print or easily export to PDF, but now it really is. Here, we can go ahead and see a print preview. You can also change to your printer or set it to print to PDF on the left-hand side or save as PDF to take a PDF copy and then share it with others. So taking Loop content in your pages, printing and exporting to PDF is now really easy inside of Loop. And finally, what about sharing the content with others? Yes, we can share all of the content we've created internally and externally. Let's go and check that out. Well, here's an example here. Maybe in this scenario, I wanna share some budget information with some particular individuals in the company. And I wanna share it outside of Loop. You absolutely can. And then on the left, I can select this button here. I can now go ahead and create a new Loop component. You'll now see it changes the theme of the overall content. I Meaning I can now select copy and I can take this into another app of my choice. Yes, Teams, Outlook as well are fully supported. With that link copied, let's head into Teams and go into one of my Microsoft Teams. I'd like to share it inside of our team for Project Green Space. So very easily, we can start a post and then literally paste in our Loop component. As if by magic, that component is now available to be edited and will all be synced back into Microsoft Loop. Go ahead and click on Post and that now that's available to your colleagues as well. So it's very easy to take content and share it internally using Loop components, but there's also capability to share your content externally. So in this scenario, let's head back into Loop. We can now see some information that we'd also like to share with third parties that don't sit in our organization. I'm gonna add more scoping information later. What I'd like to do is share this whole page with a third party who's helping us with our scoping for Project Green Space. All we now need to do is click on Share, select Page Link, and then go ahead and open the Settings button. Now here, select People You Choose, and you can now add an external person's email address, like an Outlook, Gmail, or even a third party Microsoft 365 account. We can see that here. I'm now sharing this content with my Outlook account. I can left click, and I can also change the access rights to Can View, and even set it that this link will expire next Friday. By clicking apply, I can now take this link, pop it into an email, and the third party can access this content without having access to the wider workspace and your notes, and just access this single page. All done in a couple of clicks. So what do you think? Will Loop change the way that you take notes? And of course, there are some limitations, right? For example, Loop is not an offline app. That means you'll need to be online to use Microsoft Loop. But let's face it, most of us are online all day, every day. Yes, internet connections in cafes or just connecting to your mobile, there's lots of ways to get online. Alongside that, it doesn't offer all of the capabilities that you've seen in other apps like OneNote. But what it does offer 
is more capabilities that we haven't seen in OneNote as well. So with that in mind, there are different considerations how you may want to use Loop for your own note taking. But hopefully this video has helped and I would love it if you hit that like button to let me know that this has helped you as well as hitting that all important subscribe button to find more great content like this that helps you use the tools you already have in much better ways. Other than that, well, I'll be seeing you in the next one.